As a teenaged mother living on welfare back in 1994, Tania Smith made a conscious decision that she would defy the odds and would not become a statistic. She began what eventually became a 21-year career as an executive assistant on Wall Street in New York City. With the acknowledgement that gratitude and ambition can dwell in the same apartment, she knew that despite having a steady job, the click she felt in her spirit to do and be more was too strong to ignore. After the birth of her second child in 2007, she used her creativity and life's experiences and created a witty and empowering stationery collection, She's Got Papers. While the papers were keeping America connected, one handwritten note at a time, in 2013, she expanded her platform. As an inspirational speaker and transition expert, Tania motivates, inspires, and walks alongside other women who are in the hallway, a space that she knows all too well. And if one pivot was not enough in 2021, Tania introduced the world to Gloria, a journaling series that gives her pen pals life lessons, writing prompts, and a blueprint for life, love, and everything in between. Tania has been featured in Essence, Ebony, More, Pen World, American Express Open, New York Live, Good Day Philadelphia, The Philadelphia Inquirer, The Peacock Network, and The Wendy Williams Show. Tania has spoken at St. John's University, City College of New York, New York University, and teaches workshops throughout New York City. Welcome to the PR Maven Podcast, a podcast all about growing your network and building your brand through traditional and digital networking techniques. I'm Nancy Marshall, the PR maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. I've been strengthening brands through PR for over 35 years, and now I'm celebrating the success of executives, influencers, business owners, and entrepreneurs from all around the world, all of whom have cultivated their brands and broadened their networks through traditional and digital networking methods. Each week, I interview one of these interesting and influential individuals and provide an opportunity for you, the PR Maven Nation, to gain insights from their strategies and stories. So stay tuned for this week's episode, and thanks for listening. Tania, tell me about your career and how you got into it in the first place. Well, I had a bit of a circuitous route to what I'm doing now. I started out in corporate in 1995, did it for many, many, many years, and always knew it wasn't my thing, though. I worked in financial services. I worked with some brilliant people, but it just was not my passion, and I knew that. Fast forward to 2007, the birth of my daughter. I had four months maternity leave, and it was the first time I had an opportunity to just stop, you know. And when you're on the wheel, as they call it, you never have that opportunity. You never have a chance to stop, sit down, and say, what am I doing here? And what do I really want to do? Enter She's Got Papers. Well, isn't it funny because, um, yeah, when you had some time to stop and think, were you actually writing letters? Is that what uh, inspired you about writing more letters? Well, I started writing letters when I was a little girl. So I had a pen pal. I don't know if you remember that. Right? Oh, yeah. We had pen pals. We actually right, wrote letters, went to the mailbox, mailed them, all these things. So my cousin was my pen pal. I've always loved paper. Uh, my sister took me to buy my first journal when I was 11, and that also played into just me loving to write down my ideas. And when I decided to start She's Got Papers, it really was just a natural extension of something that was always there. Well, you and I are soul sisters because I love paper too. And I love going, I love going to like that paper store. Do you have one of those paper stores that's just full of beautiful notebooks and journals and cards? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, or even yeah. Staples. I just love going to Staples <laughs> and looking at all the pretty <laughs> things. Like I spent $21 the other day on, I think, like 12 file folders. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, these are so expensive. Wow. But I think, oh, well, you know, yeah. if I'm going to sit there and do filing, I might as well have pretty file folders. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And I think if you love some of it, you love it all, right? <laughs> Whether it be journals or cards or post-its or I'm with you on the file folders. I just bought some from Amazon. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I, I think that if you get into a creative space, it starts to take you in so many different directions. You know, mine just happens to be paper. Well, I mean, if it weren't for paper... You wouldn't be here on this podcast right now because a few weeks ago, just out of the blue, I received this wonderful gift box from you. I think we had met through our mutual friend, Sabina Hitchin, who has been a guest on the podcast and who has the amazing PR prep school. And so we became aware of each other through that, through that group. And then you took the initiative to look me up and send me a box of just wonderful gifts. And I'm still enjoying all of them. And that was so generous of you. So when I received that, um, I was like, oh, yeah, I definitely have to have her on my podcast. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I don't think there's a better way to connect. Do you? No, totally. I mean, even this morning, I was at a chamber meeting with one of my relatively new clients, who is actually a young man who I wouldn't have ever thought he was much of a letter writer. But I had written him a thank you note just recently to tell him that I'm delighted to be working with him. And so this morning, when he saw me, he said, Oh, Nancy, that note that you sent me in the mail was so thoughtful. Aww. And he said, I was so happy to receive it. And I have it right on my desk. And it makes me think of you every day. Wow. And so it's exactly wow. what, it's what we're talking about. Why letter writing is so important for business and personal relationships. And it kind of helps you kind of cross over from a formal business relationship to becoming personally friend, friends with someone. Don't you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that going back to what you said, the mark of a good note is a feeling. That's what it is. It's a feeling. It's how do you make the recipient feel when they get this letter? First of all, it's unexpected, right? Right. Because no one does it anymore. Right. So it's kind of like, oh, my gosh, I don't know about you, but when I get my mail in the evening, OK, I only check it once a week, but that's another story. But when I get it, <laughs> when I check my mailbox, the first thing I look for are the ha anything handwritten. That's the first thing I'm going to open because one, you're looking for first. You wrote me. So I'm shocked. OK, two, what is it that you want to tell me? You know, and when I talk to my corporate clients and I teach them how to craft a, a perfect note, there is actually a system to it, you know, but I'm so happy that he got it. And of course, he's displaying it. Oh, my gosh, that makes me that's wonderful. That makes me smile. Well, you just mentioned there is a system to a perfect note. What is the system? I want to know. Okay, well, I think you probably know it already. <laughs> I think you're probably doing it, having been, you know, in the personal business for many years, right? But I teach my clients, it's called the right system, W-R-I-T-E. So the first rule is what is the intention? Why are you sending the note? What's your objective, right? So do you want to uh, talk about perhaps a meeting that you had? Do you want to talk about something you read in the news and you want to, you know, share that with them? What is your intention? Right. And then you go into if I've met you at an event, I want to recreate that experience. OK, first rule of going to an event where you're collecting business cards. Listen to what they're really saying, because if I write you a follow up note after I've met you, then I'm going to then in the note sort of recreate the experience. How I'm doing that is I'm refreshing your memory. I'm referencing the event. If you were the speaker, I'm talking to you about something that I caught in that talk. Okay. So 
that's very important. The I, of course, is informing of something. Maybe there's movement in the industry. If we're in the same industry, if we're in the stationary industry, girl, did you see the new Pantone color? <laughs> you're going to create pieces around that color, whatever it is. But you're becoming familiar. The T, you're thanking them for, for something. You're thanking them for their time if they stop and spoke spoke to you. You're thanking them for being an inspiration in the industry. You're thanking them. There's a thank you in there somewhere. And then the last uh, rule, if you will, you want to extend the connection. You want to extend that conversation, right? How can we move this forward? You know, let's get together in two weeks. You know, um, I see you're doing something. Add me to the mailing list. I'd like to stay in the know. There's an actual system to building and solidifying that connection. And yes, to your point, it does move on to the personal. It does. It does. I have a number of women who I call my pen pals, right? The women from She's Got Papers. Some of these women have been my customers for years and years. So it started out, maybe you bought a card. It's been 13 years. I've been in business. Some of these women have gotten divorced. Some of them have become moms. Some of them have risen in the ranks at their organization. Some of them have started businesses, you know. So it's all about how to keep the connection strong. There is no better way to do it than, than writing. I agree. And and I, too, started writing letters, like even to my grandmother when I was a little girl. I mean, I think my grandmother might have been my yeah. original pen pal. <laughs> <laughs> and I can remember, yes, I, I, I loved going to the mailbox to see if I had um, a letter back from her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I too was a pen pal with my grandmother. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I I don't have grandchildren yet, but when I do, I'm gonna I'm gonna be writing them letters all the time. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's a wonderful <laughs> tradition to continue. You know, I find now with everything becoming so digital, that is something that's they call it the lost art, right? It is. It's being lost if it's not handed down. If someone who was older didn't introduce you to it, then you don't have it, you know? I agree. I agree. And I do think that children um, should learn to write to their parents and their grand... Well, probably more likely their grandparents. I know many grandparents actually re expect to receive a thank you note in the mail after they've given a holiday gift or a birthday gift or yeah, um, yeah. so mm -hmm. I know I have two sons in their 20s and and I'm very proud that they're very good at, at sitting down and writing thank you notes when they receive gifts so that makes me very very happy <laughs> oh yeah Absolutely. So Tania what is the inspiration for your stationery collection? You know, when I started the business, I just had my daughter, and I knew that what I wanted to do with She's Got Papers was going to be different. I knew that I had to create something that was not yet there. All the creatives have that mindset. It's like, okay, I want to do this, I want to do that, but all of that stuff already exists. Well, actually, it doesn't, because no one has what you have. Like, we all have similar experiences, but no one has your particular experience. And so She's Got Papers has, I call, I, I say life is, has been my muse, right? Um, because the occasion for every piece in the collection has been life. You know, starting with the very first one that I designed, it's a piece called Just As I Am. And it's all about body image. When I had my son, I was 19 years old. I came out of the hospital looking like Naomi with my Campbell, but with my daughter, not that much. Right? Because I was 32. <laughs> I was 32. My kids are 13 years apart. And so when I was 19, I'm not thinking about body image. I had gained so little weight when I had Brandon, but with my daughter, I'm 32 and I'm a grown lady now. So that's a different uh, body chemistry. It's a different pregnancy altogether. And I was having this conversation with myself on the treadmill about how I had to get back to my fighting weight, okay, which was the size I was wearing before I left maternity leave. I wanted to go back to work in my real clothes and this and this and that. And I got off the treadmill, I got into the shower, and I started speaking to myself out loud. And what I said was, Tania, stop this. 
you you sound like a fool. Stop it. And that became the first design. And she's got papers. I said, okay, I'm going to design a piece that women can relate to because at some point we've all felt whatever we felt about our bodies. And that was really, I guess, the impetus, the catalyst, whatever you want to call it. And then all these other designs came out. Love of self is the greatest gift. You know, about the relationship, I believe, is the most important you'll ever have, the one with yourself. You know, walking the walk is the hardest part. That's all about my journey as a teenage mother. So the collection has always been inspired by events in my life, you know. That's awesome that you have uh, embraced (laughs) self-love because, yeah, I mean, you're always going to be with yourself. I mean, when you're with others, it. If, if you feel good about yourself, then that joy and that love will emanate to others. So it's just like uh, in the airplane when you have to put on your, your own oxygen mask first. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so, it's the truth. Yeah. It's the truth. And I think if you can master that, then so many other things in your life become clear. You know, I think as women, specifically with body image, you can't just go to the newsstand anymore. You know, you go to the newsstand for a pack of gum, but before you leave, you're thinking about, what about my eyelash? Maybe I should do something with my eyebrows. What about my hips? You know, I could tone my thighs. All you wanted was a pack of double mint. (laughs) You know? (laughs) I love that. (laughs) Right? No, it really is about the internal work. It truly is. And I've tried to design pieces that I knew my pen pals could relate with. Yeah, I think that's great. And actually, sometimes when you're writing a letter, you can write things to others that you might not say out loud. It might be hard to say something, but if you're sitting and writing it, um, you can say almost more intimate things. Yes. And tell people you care. And, And just as you said before, just the act of sitting down, taking the time, getting out some nice paper, getting a pen, writing, and then putting somebody's address and putting a stamp on it. I mean, as you said before, Tania, these are, this is a lost art. And I'm afraid that a lot of kids don't even know how to do these things. I, I actually try to keep a stack of note cards and envelopes on my desk at all times with stamps on them. I, I put stamps on them in advance to make it easier yeah. and uh, encourage myself to to just send a note. I try to send several a week. So um, that is something that I, I enjoy doing. Absolutely. Can you tell me about Dear Gloria and what that's all about? Well, you you kind of alluded to it <laughs> in writing, writing a letter where you can tell someone else things. It's sort of like Dear Gloria, except you're speaking to yourself. So Dear Gloria is a journaling series that I created. I was a little sister who wanted to do everything my big sister was doing. So my big sister had a diary. I wanted a diary. So my sister took me to Chinatown and brought me my first one when I was 11. And I would write in my diary periodically here and there. I really started journaling seriously when I was 19. And I was in the first big transition of my life. I was pregnant with my son. And there were so many different emotions running through me. And my diary became my companion. It really became my best friend. Now, you fast forward, uh, what, 30 years, almost 30 years. Um, I have 66 books. And when I started this book, I just wrote on the first page out of the blue. I'm going to call you Gloria. Now, the other 65 ladies are furious because I've never, ever given a diary a name. But I sat with myself and I said, okay, Tania, how can you use dear Gloria to provide value to your pen pals? Because if you have the note cards, you write in the note cards, you send them. I've had some of my pen pals tell me they're so beautiful, Tania. I don't even want to send them out. And I'm like, no, send them. They're not collectibles. Now, right? But with Dear Gloria, I saw it as a way to, first of all, help women start a journaling practice, right? And then also to 
kind of give them some tips and tricks so that they know how I've done it. And I say this not to be dramatic. My journal has saved my life. It it has been the ultimate healer. Uh, it has brought me revelations. We celebrate together. It is a confidant. It is it's a free, non judgmental space. I think that's just awesome because it's kind of like having a secret friend, right? Just somebody that you can share with and open up to and process yes. your thoughts and feelings. Well, absolutely. Well, this is such a great conversation. We're going to take a short break and be back in just a moment with more with Tania. I have so much that I want to talk to her about. But first, I want to tell you about my book, which is called Grow Your Audience, Grow Your Brand, which is available on Amazon.com as a paperback or a Kindle edition. It's also available on Audible because I recorded it. And uh, it's got actionable advice on growing your network and growing your brand by taking care of your audience. And obviously, one way to take care of your audience is actually to write them letters. So <laughs> it's all connected in this marketing and PR world. We'll be back in just a moment with more from Tania Smith. Do you want to grow your client or customer base? Perhaps increase brand awareness? Maybe tell your unique story more effectively? Of course you do. But you may be worried that you don't have enough expertise to make that happen. Well, no worries, PR Maven Nation. Let the PR Maven herself, Nancy Marshall, show you how easy it is to get your message across effectively using a powerful yet simple tool, a message map. Nancy's training is often called informative and constructive, well-designed and impactful, with a perfect blend of theory and real life experience. You will leverage Nancy's expertise to create your own message map when you register for this comprehensive online video training course, which is broken down into four easy to understand modules. Normally this course is priced at $147, but for listeners of the PR Maven podcast, that's you PR Maven Nation, it's only $29 when you enter the code word podcast during enrollment. It even includes a workbook and bonus content to guide you through the process. So go to prmaven.com and click on the Message Map Mastery course to enroll today. Remember, enter the word podcast during enrollment for a special discounted price of $29. Welcome back. And today we're talking with Tania Smith, inspirational speaker and stationery designer at She's Got Papers, LLC. And I'm going to dive right back in with more questions. Tania, what is the greatest piece of advice you have ever received? I, I wouldn't say it was advice so much as a call to action, right? When, speaking of letters... After my son was born, my grandmother wrote me a letter. And in the letter, she was giving me, you know, words of wisdom. And one of the things she said in the letter was, you're not the first, you won't be the last, but what you do now is up to you. And I take that and I apply it to every single piece of my life, right? So when you think about the ups, you know, and the, as you're coming down, because you're going to always be on a seesaw, peaks and valleys and things in life. I always stop and say, particularly in the valleys, you're not the first girl. So what you going to do? <laughs> are you going to stay here? You know, you're going to stay in the bed or you're going to stay in the couch. You're going to stay, you know, upset. You're going to stay in this space. What are you going to do to propel yourself forward? I like that. You know, that kind of reminds me of uh, Kamala Harris when she became vice president. She actually was the first woman of color yes. and uh, the first yes. woman vice president. And uh, and yes. she came right out and said, uh, but I'm not going to be the last. So that was so inspiring. Nope. That was so it was. It yeah. was. And I think w what she's put into place, like they say, success leaves clues, right? So... For the female politicians who are coming after her, you have a blueprint now. You have a roadmap, you know, and it's just about the just like the peaks and valleys in life. I tell women when I go out to speak, you know, 
if this has happened to you, you survived it. It takes you up another level. So when something else comes around the bend, you just reach in your tool case. You get your wrench, your hammer, your pliers, whatever you need, right? Because now you know what's possible. Now you know what you can do. So it's really just about taking what you've applied and what you've learned and moving forward. Uh, that's really great. I, I like that, the analogy of reaching into your toolkit and take what you've mm-hmm. learned and move forward. That's really great. So what is it um, about the written word that makes it so powerful? And what is the impact of handwritten notes? Well, if we're talking about business, the impact in just sending one, like you referenced the young man earlier, he has it on his desk. He watch, he, he looks at it every day. Your impact is solidified there, Right. Now it's just about keeping the relationship, providing value in the relationship and building on the relationship. If we're talking about personally, my grandmother writing to me, you're not the first, you're not the last, but what you do now is up to you. That gave life to me on the days where I was just like, I I can't do this. Like, this is too hard or this is too, you know, to become a mom at 19 years old. That takes a lot away from your life. Your life, my, my peers were in college. You know, I was at home with an infant. So it's like, no, you can do this, okay? And any time, well, I have a treasure trove of letters. I have three nesting boxes full of cards and letters. So whenever I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can't do this, <laughs> you know, whether it's the business or whether, you know, it's a struggle with my kids or whatever it is, I can go to the box and pull something. I was reading something that my aunt Iris wrote me in 2002. And it was basically like, girl, do you know who you are? Do you know who your people are? I don't know what I was going through at the time, but she wrote that to me. So the written word can give life. The written word can give hope. I I used to say about She's Got Papers in the very beginning. She's Got Papers is a movement. Well, Nancy, it was only about 25 of us. However, (laughs) I said, she's got papers is a movement. And so I think about that, you know, when I'm like, I can't do this. At the beginning of the pandemic, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Like every other business owner, when everything just went totally flat, dead. Remember? Oh, yeah. (laughs) One year ago. Yeah. So. You, you look back on things, you know, and they can provide you a window. They can provide you a ray. That doesn't mean that it solves your problems. I read a letter and then I got rich. No. I read a letter that helped me say, okay, I got to take this in baby steps, but I can still do it like that. Right. Well, so along those lines, How is a journaling practice therapeutic and life-affirming? You know, with Dear Gloria and with the 65 ladies who came before her, one of the things that I've known and I've started to really talk about is that journaling grants you the freedom to be bare, right? You can say it. And you can say it truthfully and honestly because no one's going to judge it. No one's going to refute you. If these are your feelings, no, nobody can run in and say, that ain't how you feel. No, that's how you feel, right? And once you start telling the truth, then you can build up from there. The truth is, is the foundation of anything, okay? So once you can declare it, then you can start putting the pieces of you together, So it is, it does provide the ultimate freedom. I like that. The truth is the foundation of anything, and it provides Mm -hmm. you with the ultimate freedom. Absolutely. Yeah, that's beautiful. So Mm -hmm. what should people do if they just can't get into the habit of letter writing or journaling? (laughs) (laughs) Well, for, for letter writing... I do something similar. 
that you do, I oh, anytime I go out, because I'm always meeting people, right? Whether I'm in the supermarket, wherever I am. So I always have cards in my bag. When I come home from a function, I always have thank you notes set aside. And I also stamp, that is so funny you said that, I also stamp my envelopes as well because I'm, I'm a big stamp junkie too. So anything that comes out from the post office, I have to run and get it new, right? So the forever stamps and all of those. So I would say set aside three notes a week that you want to write, three people that you want to reach out to, Okay. And there's, there's three notes you should always be writing anyway. Number one is the thank you note. That's the holy grail, okay? Thank you never is always on time. It never, ever goes out of style. So thank you would be one, number one. Number two is the just because note, okay? When the pandemic started, I wrote so many just because notes because we couldn't go anywhere. You're not seeing anyone, but you still want people to know you're on my mind. Okay, and then the last note is the encouragement note, because we've been completely wiped out in terms of socialization. You know, I watch my daughter um, doing virtual school. Now she's going to graduate virtually, like graduate in the kitchen, eighth grade. You know, us connecting through handwritten notes is something really, really simple that you can do. And it's like anything that's important to you, Nancy, you know that you want to have your hair done. You want your hair looking beautiful. Make that appointment. If you want a journal, make an appointment with yourself. My journaling day is Saturday. For years, for over 25 years, Saturday has been the day. And don't forget, I had small children, okay? But I'm up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I'll shower. I get my book, get my coffee. I'm journaling from 6 to 10, okay? Pencil it in. It's important. It's like anything, right? I would also say if you journal, maybe you did it, you know, once or twice, and then you kind of fell off, you know. You didn't do it again for two weeks. So what? So what? Get back to it. If you have five minutes, do it for five minutes. If you have ten minutes, do it for ten minutes. But give, it's like anything. Give yourself space. So, Tania, what is an app a book or a website that you have found helpful and why? Okay. My favorite book, I would have to say, is Faith in the Valley, and it's by Ian Van Zandt. It's a little tiny book. You know it? No, but I know um, Ivanya Van Zandt because she's she's big with Oprah, right? Yes. (laughs) She's big with Oprah. And, and I love the book because they're little tiny anecdotes. And I usually just open it up into whatever page it's on. I read something and I'm like, okay, that's it for the day. That's it for the day. Today I read one about solitude and it talked about while the brain is clearing and the heart is mending, it may mean taking a break from the regular routine and stepping away from the routine people. We've all needed to do that at some point during this pandemic, especially, or even in life. Just moving away and taking a break. Well, (laughs) I like that, too. I was just talking to somebody today about how I have spent quite a bit of time alone during the pandemic. And it actually hasn't been that bad. I've kind of enjoyed it because I kind of like puttering around at home and you know, organizing things and cleaning things and getting, you know, so I've had more time than I've ever had before to do stuff like that. And it has felt very good. So I like solitude. (laughs) I think a lot of people would be surprised that because I'm such a social butterfly and people think I just want to be out partying all the time. (laughs) But I do. (laughs) I have enjoyed spending time at home alone uh, over the past year. And I'm going to try to keep doing that even after we are all vaccinated. <laughs> That's right. Me too. Me too. So, Tania, how can people get in touch with you if they want to follow up? Oh, yes, please. I'm everywhere at She's Got Papers, uh, most active on Instagram and uh, LinkedIn. All right. Well, I am going to start following you on Instagram because I enjoy doing Instagram as well. 
And I hope that um, we can start liking each other's stuff. So, of course. <laughs> and of course, I hope we also can be pen pals. Oh, you want to, Nancy? Yes, I would love to. That would be so fun. Oh, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to write you a letter tonight. <laughs> so when I get home tonight, okay. I'm going to write you a letter. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Perfect. this was just this was just a really bright light in my day to talk to you, and I want to thank you, Tania, and I hope that we can stay in touch, and we're going to be pen pals, and I'm going to let Sabina Hitchin know, Sabina, who's got her press for success. It's because of her that we're friends, and um, I just look forward to staying in touch with you. I'm looking at the picture of you that you sent to me, and you have on this beautiful aqua-colored blouse, and you're sitting among all of your journals and notebooks and girls yeah yeah it just looks so beautiful oh thank you thank you well thank you for joining me and i know everybody in pr maven nation enjoyed listening to our conversation because you and i both emanate the same positive energy so it was really enjoyable it was a blast. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, I hope you have a great day, and I hope everybody in PR Maven Nation has a great day as well. I'll see you next week. That's it for this week's episode. I'd like to thank you for listening, and if you feel that you've gotten value out of today's conversation, consider leaving a five-star review on iTunes or whatever app you're using to tune in. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should do so. I release a new episode each week, and subscribing will make sure you get an alert when there's a new episode. You can also join the PR Maven Nation by going to prmaven.com nation and clicking join. It's free, and it's a great community of like-minded individuals who are all looking to learn and grow from one another. If you have an Alexa-enabled device, be sure to add the PR Maven Marketing Minute to your daily flash briefing menu. Thanks again for listening, and have a great rest of your week, PR Maven Nation.